All right, fellas, so I've got something really exciting to show you. Uh, this is something that I've been working on secretly for the past year and a half. Uh, it started off with an idea by some of you guys. Uh, you guys know that I love the NBA. I've got a lot of NBA jerseys in excess of 70, I think it is at the moment. Uh, so I've collected them for a long time. Uh, when the YouTube channel started taking off, my best friends gave me their jerseys and so the collection just grew and grew and grew and now it's in excess of 70. Uh, so watching all these videos that you guys watch that I make, uh, I started getting comments and started getting ideas about making my own jersey and frankly I didn't even know where to go and how to go about it. Uh, but then I got some pointers from some of you guys and I um, that's all I really needed to kind of start looking into it. Now when it comes to this sort of stuff I have basically zero motivation to do business to do this kind of groundwork that it requires. So it's taken me a very long time. So basically, I made the decision to send uh, an email to a designer a year ago. Uh, and now we're at a stage where you can see what I'm wearing here. So this is what I've come up with. This is what the designer came up with. Uh, so squat every day. Uh, and then this is the back of it. So, the design, so this is the, this is the first thing I've ever designed and ever, you know, done anything like this. Uh, so I didn't really know what to do. So the designer that I first spoke to, he said to me, uh, you know, what do you like? He sent me some examples. And so I sent him some NBA jerseys that I liked and it kind of started from there. A million emails back and forth, back and forth, uh, before I kind of worked out what I actually liked. Now. We all know what we like when we see it, but can you draw it? Can you design it? Can you come up with something new? Now that is something really, really interesting. So I think everyone as a, as a spectator can go, okay, that's really, really cool. I like that. But making something unique, making something from ground zero is very, very difficult is what I've found. I mean, I'm not artsy at all. This is not my forte. Uh, so basically a year ago it started and then when I finally came up with this design, with the designer, uh, then it was kind of like, okay, what happens now? So I got the files from the designer, uh, the files which are required to make this sort of stuff. So then I went on a journey to find a supplier, a manufacturer. And so that took a very long time. Once again, millions and millions of emails, but finally we're here. So now this morning I received samples uh, from this manufacturer and uh, the jersey looks absolutely amazing to me it feels great um, there's like these I don't know if you guys will be able to see this but this is a nice little touch so there's these like can you see that so there's like these little um, fenestrated uh, I think that's the term uh, little holes on the side uh, it feels amazing. It's a really nice uh, material. What do they call them? Uh, it says here it's like 100% synthetic, but there's a specific microfiber. That's right. Microfiber is, is the material of this thing. Uh, it feels amazing. I love it. So <laughs> I'm going to have this available for some of you guys that are interested. Um, if you want to support the channel, if you want to try one of these on, if you want to have a squat every day jersey. Uh, I'll have it available. I don't know quite when, probably in the next two, three weeks. Uh, so it's a, it's a multi-stage process uh, for some of you guys that don't know. So first you gotta get the thing designed. Then you need to find a manufacturer. And when you, when you finally find a manufacturer, you get samples, then you need to kind of work out how to actually sell it, how to make it available. And this is the third step, which I've never ventured into. So now I need to work out whether you know, I'll go with Amazon or whether I go with eBay or whether I go with uh, Shopify. I've never sold anything online in my life. So this is all very, very new to me. But this is also the first time you guys know that I've, that I've sold merch in the past, you know, with the, with the, with the jumpers and what have you. Uh, that website called Spreadshirt is a website that basically once you reach 10,000 subscribers, on YouTube, it kind of uh, uh, sends you a, a message saying, you know, you can start selling merchandise and have it available, have it displayed on YouTube. And so that's kind of how I got sucked into that idea. 
Uh, and one of the, let's say, sister companies, one of the, the companies that they are linked with is Spreadshirt. And so you go on the website, you upload your logo, which I came up with one day with my crappy uh, editing skills. So came up with that, and then you can just basically upload your logos onto all these different things that they have. And it's completely drop shipping. And so I don't hold the uh, merchandise at all. I don't know how it feels. I don't know how it looks. I don't know anything. Uh, so that was kind of the drop shipping side of things. And the profits with that is basically next to nothing. They're essentially using your name to make money for themselves. And so I've said this in the past, like, you know, I sell a $50 jumper and I earn like six, seven dollars out of it. So, you know, you guys fork out $50 and I get like, you know, not even a quarter of it. So, uh, and also I don't like, I don't know what the quality of the thing is. It's just completely external to me. It's, I'm a completely uh, out of the loop. They just uh, give me, you know, breadcrumbs uh, for the for the logo essentially that I provide. Um, this, however, is completely different. So this stuff is going to come to my home address. I'm going to have it somewhere here in the in the room in my in my computer room, and I'm going to be selling it from home. And so that means I get all of the profit. And so uh, once I make it available, if, if somebody buys it, then I'll go to the post office and I ship it to you, and we go from there. And then everything that's available for profit, I get. And so in terms of uh, supporting the channel, in terms of supporting me, in terms, in terms of supporting these videos, this is probably the best way to go about it. And, uh, and it kind of makes me feel good because I actually believe in the product. I love the product. It means something to me. It's not just an arbitrary thing uh, like some of these other uh, things. So this is a very much a learning experience for me. Uh, once again, I've never designed anything. I've never emailed anybody the designs. I've never found a manufacturer and now I've never sold, uh, 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 sold anything. And so this is all a, a learning experience, but it's a very exciting one now that, it's, that I can actually feel it in my hands. The, the initial thought, the initial groundwork was very tiresome, you know, emailing the designer and he's talking to me about all this stuff that I don't know anything about. Uh, but now that I actually feel it in my hands and I'm like, well, gee, this looks actually amazing. And it's, squat every day man like this is the jersey for the channel this is the jersey for me the logo at the back which i designed all those years ago it just looks sick man and so uh, i'm really happy to show this to you guys uh, i wish i could be wearing this outside but it's like really really cold so i've been putting all my gear on uh, as soon as i walk outside uh, so look out for this i'll, I'll give you an update uh, in the future as well probably in the next two three weeks I've already emailed the supplier and I said to him, man, I'm loving what you guys have done. Absolutely loving it. Uh, and so I've, I've, I'm going to order. So this is the other thing. <laughs> because I don't have an unlimited amount of money, right? So, uh, you know, I can't just order like 1,000 freaking of these tops. I'll go bankrupt. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to order 300. And even that is very, very expensive. Um, I might be making a huge loss here, but... This is the thing with manufacturing as well, like which I, which I learned. So the more bulk you buy, the cheaper per unit it is, right? So if I buy 10,000 of these, they're gonna end up being like $5 a pop. If I buy, you know, uh, 10 of them, they're like 25, $30 a pop, right? So you can see how when people have a lot of money, they can also make a lot of money, a lot of profit. But people that are starting out, it gets very, very tight in profit margins. Not to mention the amount of time that I've spent like organizing all of this stuff. Like a lot of time has gone into this and I haven't made a single dime out of it. So this is the thing with business. This is the thing with all these things. Like it's, it's all, you know, uh, charity. It's all free time until you actually see something in the back of it. Um, so I'm going to order 300. And the, the way I did, uh, 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 came up with that number is I'm going to order... Uh, 100 extra large, which is the one I'm wearing and it fits unbelievably well. I'm loving it. Uh, perfect for me. 100 large and 100 medium. Uh, and I'm going to basically call it that. So I'll have 300 units in my house and I'll put up a link when it's available to the shop, online shop, whichever I decide. If you guys have an idea how to actually go about this properly, I don't, I'd love to hear it because I don't know uh, what the best side is. I think Amazon is, is the top of my list because... I don't know, because it's the most popular, I think. I don't know. I've, I've read some stuff about it. It seems, seems pretty easy. Um, 
so it's going to be 100 large, 100 extra large, 100 medium, and then we'll go from there. And uh, if you guys want to support, you know, what I've done here with this, it would be really cool. If you don't want to support, that's also really cool. I think uh, just the fact that I did this for myself is really, really cool. Even if I make a huge loss out of this, which is frankly the scary bit out of all of this. Like, you know, um, you know, I don't have money lying around, you know, thousands of dollars lying around to be thrown in the bin. But this is something I believed in. And uh, I think there's going to be people that will support it and appreciate what I've done. Um, even if I can break even, it will be really cool for me because then I'll have this to remember, uh, this whole squat everyday journey, which is uh, stretched into 1300 days now, which is insane. But anyway, this is gonna be a long video again, but I thought I'd give you an update. So look for, you know, in the next couple of weeks, I'll, I'll, I think uh, we'll get closer to getting the, the bulk of these tops. Um, and then we'll go from there. So anyway, I'm ranting now, but a um, few more weeks. Appreciate you guys. Let me get into the workout. So to this this workout, while I'm while I got you here, in this workout, what I want to do is I want to do some loaded carries. One of you guys, uh, I saw the comment from yesterday, gave me a really good idea. Uh, so the fella, uh, if I'm not mistaken, does ice skating or something to that extent, something on ice. And he said to me that, you know, he's really, really comfortable in wide stand squats, really comfortable doing that. And he said, uh, he thinks it's because of skating. And, uh, you know, I've kind of said that I'm really weak in a wide stand squat. And I think it's because of my abductors are weak and my AD ductors are really weak and, 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 and tight. And he said, it could be that, but also have you thought about your obliques? In skating, there's a lot of obliques because there's a lot of lateral forces. So he said, why don't you try training obliques? And I thought, you know, there's something to that. Like if you think about lateral loading of the of, of the of your of your back, of your of your body, like if I started doing this sort of stuff, starting leaning on the side, the obliques and the adductor kind of fights the same lateral force. And so if I start to train obliques a little bit as well, it might be something there. So I thought this morning I'm gonna get out. I'm going to walk around the backyard with a dumbbell or a kettlebell and I'll see just me activating the obliques, how that's going to feel when I go into a wide stand squat. So that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Um, so what I, what I want to do is I'll, I'll do some jumps, just some pogo hops, and then I'll go into the uh, suitcase carry, target the oblique, internal external oblique, and then I'll see if that kind of makes me, my muscle connect with the oblique a little bit better and if it feels, if the score feels any different. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna do now. Anyway, let's get out there, uh, change into something warm and uh, get going. The fella that gave me this idea goes by the username of Everybody Loves Gil Bates. I think it's something along those lines. Uh, I might be wrong with that, uh, but it's something around that. And uh, if I didn't read that comment, I wouldn't have come up with this idea. I wouldn't have uh, been doing this. So what I did here was I did 100 jumps followed by suitcase carry around the house. Now, the distance around the house is probably, oh man, I don't know, uh, maybe like 70 meters or something like that. I don't know. I could be getting that completely wrong. But it was enough because by the end of one lap, uh, my grip was given out with this 20 kilo dumbbell. Now, it doesn't seem like much, but when you're walking, uh, it does something. Obviously, the obliques get put on the map very very soon i want to say that ql muscle also gets put on the map that lower back muscle which is kind of like as deep in your body as the psoas basically it's like very very deep uh, so those two muscles get put on the map quite quickly along with the grip but also what i was feeling was you know stuff around the thoracic spine like all along the the spine i was feeling some muscles i don't know which ones so whenever you have a lateral force uh, you know, put into the system, it challenges completely different sets of muscles. Like, uh, you know, you could be deadlifting and squatting until the cows come home. These muscles are not going to get taxed at that angle. So this is going back to the whole variation thing, right? Like if you're continuously working in the sagittal plane, you're not going to be, you know, you're not going to be challenging yourself in that, what is it? The transverse uh, plane, which I think all of it has a, Although it has a place, like, you know, for the longest time, man, I've always kind of been looking for it. I've been looking for that one exercise, which is going to 
make everything all right. And I've had so many exercises come in and out and, you know, when you first plug something in, it feels great. And then it kind of starts to diminish. It starts to, you know, fizzle, fizzle away. And then you kind of realize, you start to realize, well, maybe the actual variation is the key in all of this. And I've, I know I've heard you guys say this a lot uh, to me over the years. It's the variation, man. It's the variation. Mix it up. Mix it up. Continues to mix it up. But I was so married to this idea of specificity. I wanted to be kind of like basketball. You just keep on shooting shots. But even in basketball now, like if I sit there and I think about it, like coach used to always say to us, man, like you can't just be stationary in one spot and, and continuously, you know, getting fed from one spot shooting the shot. You're not going to get that shot in the game, man. You're supposed to be running around off screens, around cones, you know, uh, uh, being being draped all over. Every shot is different. That's kind of how you want to practice. Um, that's exactly what, what, that's exactly what, uh, you know, this variation business with the, with the training is when it comes to the barbell and strength. So I want to thank that fella for, for giving me this idea because when I went to the squats, it felt pretty damn good. Now today's box was 16 inches last time. So two days ago, it was 12 inches. So the box is higher, which is going to come to me easier. Um, so at 12 inches box i did five sets of five i want to say or seven sets of five with 100 kilos today i managed to do seven sets of 10. now predominantly that's going to be because the box is much higher and so it's easier on the hip flexes it's easier and everything but i, I dare say i want to I, I want to i want to say to myself that it actually felt better than just the difference in the box height my back felt better my hips felt better so i reckon you're onto something with this man i think the obliques have something to say and if you go back to like you know the founding fathers of of uh, sports training uh, sports uh, science you know Vokashansky whatever the fellow name was from Russia he is the one that said that if you want intra-abdominal pressure to be high you have to train the obliques the obliques are the most responsible muscle when it comes to internal uh, uh, abdominal pressure and intra-abdominal pressure is what we actually need to be strong. Like that is where we leak the most amount of power through our core. I've had these thoughts over and over again through the through the whole duration of the of the squat program. And I remember once upon a time, way before the squat everyday program, I bought myself a barrel. You guys have seen my my beer my beer keg. Uh, I used to carry those things around. I've got farmers uh, handles like those barbells where you can you know farmers carry. I've got them. I. I, I did these things because I wanted to kind of implement a bit of like strongman training, carrying stuff around. And then when I when I saw that comment, immediately I thought to myself, Dan John, look up Dan John. Dan John is a coach, an author, a very intelligent fellow who's been around the game for a long time, trained many athletes. And, you know, if every time I think about, you know, loaded carries, I think of Dan John. I've read one of his books uh, back in the day, and he talked about how just implementing some sort of carry he, he preaches like you, every single time you train, do some sort of carry. And there's many, many different type of carry. A suitcase carry, a farmer's carry. You can do a, a bear hug carry. You can do a waiter's carry. You can do a kettlebell rack carry. All sorts of carry. And he, he advocated for us to continuously play with different with different um, carries just to completely keep the body off balance. And he, he talks about many athletes that he coached, you know, guys that were elite. Um, and, you know, uh, there was one case he said that he didn't know what to do with this one fella. He was already elite. He was already really good. Uh, you know, he, he didn't know what to tell him during the training session. But towards the end, you know, he, he challenged him with some carries. And after a few weeks, the guy started like setting all these crazy PRs, man. Um, in all sorts of like, you know, deadlifts and squats. Um, I, mean, I think this fellow was a discus thrower. And he was amazed by the simple, how effective, simple stuff, like just carrying stuff around that is an odd object. Uh, so I think there's something to that, definitely. And because I'm in this like variation mentality right now, yeah, I'll do it. I don't care. I'll do it all. Um, I'm doing jumps, as you guys saw. I'll do some carries every other day as well now. I'm doing SSBs. I'm doing uh, front squats, back squats. I'm doing different box heights, uh, 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 squats. Uh, I'm doing all sorts of stuff for the upper body as well. So there's a lot going on, uh, but I think that's the key. And uh Today, I put the obliques on the map. Right now, as I'm sitting here, I'm actually feeling my QL in my lower back and I'm feeling my uh, obliques, which is really interesting because I'm, I'm really, really interested to see whether I'm going to be sore tomorrow in the obliques because I don't get challenged laterally like this or transversely like this. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, 
Um, and now I'm thinking about Pavel Tzatzuli, what he used to say. When in doubt, when in doubt, train your core and your grip. Simple words to live by. And, uh, you know, I continuously find myself looking back at these old school guys, Dan John, Pavel Tzatzuli, and Louis Simmons. Man, there's a lot, a lot of stuff. To, you know, there's a lot of similarity in, in their success. You just have to open your eyes and listen. Anyway, guys, long ass video. Uh, big announcement today. Uh, some of you guys probably knew that I was working uh, on this in, in behind, you know, behind the scenes. Uh, but here we go. Uh, you know, the jerseys are coming in the next couple of weeks, I hope. I'll keep you posted. Uh, tell me what you think. Tell me what I should do. Tell me some tips. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Appreciate you. Peace out.